Every minute of every day, somebody dies of a heart attack in America. It's the nation's biggest killer. More frightening than that is that a huge number of the people who die drop dead without any warning they've got heart disease. Two thirds of men and half of all women, the first sign or symptom is that they have a heart attack or die. You don't know you have it until, until you're dead. And it doesn't have to be that way. Heart attacks and strokes are absolutely preventable. The science is the slam dunk. But you just put your head there and your feet down yep. here, and that slides the patient into the scanner. So these are the coronary arteries here. In the beginning, um, I think everybody was extremely interested. And everybody would say, well, what's that white stuff that's, that I see there? And I said, well, that's calcium in the coronary arteries. Calcium, a crucial ingredient in our bones and just what you don't want in your heart. The calcium is actually part of the healing process. One of the body's natural defense mechanisms is to put down calcium to try to heal this sort of bubble. It doesn't occur there unless there is plaque there. Before the advent of Doug's ray gun, doctors had to use a complicated formula dreamt up at Harvard in the 50s to work out somebody's risk of heart attack. Adding together weight, age, lifestyle, cholesterol, and then guess. You could have all the risk factors and not have any coronary disease. You could have none of the risk factors and have coronary disease. But if you have a coronary scan and you see calcium, you know you have disease. It's not a risk factor. It is looking at the disease, part of the disease process. Look, what are your alternatives? You say to a person, well, you're at low risk. And then if the patient dies, oh, I was wrong, sorry, why well, guess? Why base your decision on a score derived from a compilation of risk factors when you can look directly at the heart and see how much plaque there is there? We know that it identifies high-risk patients. We know that treating high-risk patients saves lives. Therefore, identification of the high-risk patient will save lives. Breathe in. Hold your breath. The scores go uh... Zero, it can go as high as four or 5,000. So I call it mild, uh, zero, mild, moderate, extensive, and oh my God. Well, how many lives do you think would have been saved if we'd done it in 1990, um, what we're doing now in 2013? And the answer is?